This right here is the Dell Inspiron 16 Plus, and there is a very particular reason I'm reviewing this laptop. Earlier this year, I reviewed its smaller brother, the Inspiron 14 Plus, and that was an absolute disaster of a laptop, simply because of one fundamental flaw, it got excessively hot all the time, so much so that it could be my secondary barbecue grill. So I thought I'd give the 16 Plus a separate chance to see if it's any better than its younger sibling and judge it in its own capacity. And the configuration we have here is no joke. I mean, it's got Intel's Core 7 Ultra 155H series processor. We've got a respectable 32 gigabytes of DDR5 memory. We've also got a nice large two terabyte SSD. NVIDIA's RTX 4060 graphics with with eight gigabytes of VRAM. Additionally, we do have Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3 standards on board. And finally, this is a 16 inch Quad HD Plus display. Now, at the surface level, the Dell Inspiron 16 Plus looks like quite the impressive machine as it should be because it has quite the hefty price tag for the configuration we're reviewing today. And I really wanna go in depth with this machine to give you guys an honest idea of what you can expect where you dish your hard earned cash on this laptop and all the surprises you might run into along this review, so let's get into it. Now, despite being a mid-range plus laptop, you get some pretty standard looking cardboard packaging for the Inspiron 16 Plus. It's like really plain and straightforward. Anyway, once you open up the box inside, behind some more protective packaging, here it is, the 16 Plus in the flesh. More on that in just a minute. We also get a standard 130 watt charging adapter, which makes sense given the hardware we have, and then a standard type C cable right out of the box, which in my opinion is nice to see. Now you also have the wall outlet charging cable piece, and then past that some basic documentation and warranty regulation information. Starting off with design, a cool fact that if you actually get the non-discrete GPU version of the Inspiron 16 Plus, you get a semi-premium build with a top half metallic exterior and bottom plastic exterior. However, the discrete GPU version that we have here has a complete metallic exterior with a significantly more premium build. Now, with that said, regardless of which variant you get, the overall design language is the same, and I really like the design language of the Inspiron Plus series. It's got these softened corners. It's not excessively linear, so it's not too sharp looking but at the same time it has a modern stylish approach with all the various cutouts across the body and just the easy going tone combined with that classic silver color that Dell of course offers. Now one of the more ridiculous prospects of this machine is the fact that it has a weight of almost 5 pounds with the discrete GPU version here which is absolutely insane for a 16 inch high end productivity laptop and significantly above the average. Now starting with the top side so like I mentioned you have a complete metallic exterior over here which means it feels nice and premium no unnecessary textures also it's highly fingerprint resistant which is very nice and something that other laptop manufacturers should just do more often and then you've got some subtle branding at the center io port diversity is pretty interesting so everything is on either side so on one side you do have a dc charging port in case you prefer to use that rather than include a type c charging port you also have a nice large heat exhaust vent over here followed by a modern day hdmi 2.1 port and then you have a one usb type c thunderbolt 4 port, that's the only one you get. On the other side, you have a USB-A super speed port. Again, a nice large heat exhaust vent. You'll also, of course, notice that you have one more USB-A super speed port, a headphone jack, and then for whatever reason, a micro SD card reader on a 16 inch laptop. How, how do you include a micro SD card reader than a full size one on such a large machine? Walk me through this, Dell. Like, <laughs> Bottom side of the laptop, pretty straightforward stuff. So you have a metallic exterior, it is a removable lid. Then you'll notice you have two large long air intake vents, which are linear in nature. And then also you'll notice you do have a quad firing speaker system. Two of the speaker grills are bottom firing, while two are top firing. We'll do a sound test later on in the video. When you open up this laptop, you actually have a very nice, clean, minimalist looking palm rest over here with lots of space. I actually really like the silver color here. And again, that metallic exterior really gives it a premium feel. Now at the center you unfortunately get a mediocre plastic surface finish trackpad here and the biggest crime is the sheer amount of flex on this trackpad and the second biggest crime is the rigidness there's not a lot, a lot of tactility so when you actually click on the top half of the trackpad your clicks hardly register which can be a little bit of a nuisance at times on the concrete though the keyboard is very nice so you've got nice large keycaps a lovely choice of font i love the color coordinated gray keycaps and then also, of course, the keyboard is fully backlit with plenty of brightness to spare. 
You will notice there is no 10 keypad here, but that's by design. A lot of laptops prefer not to have it. Whether you want it or not, it's gonna come down to your preference, honestly speaking. Now, the real impressive part though is the actual typing quality of the keyboard. You've got a good amount of key travel. There's a lot of tactility, but a little bit of softness as well, which makes for a great typing experience overall. Right above the keyboard, you do have this pseudo looking speaker grill. It's actually not a speaker grill, rather it's a passive cooling vent. We'll talk more about that in the thermal section. Moving over to the hinges themselves, they are very reliable this year. There's not a lot of wobble. It seems to be well tuned and calibrated. Now, as far as display fitting goes, you do have a plastic encasing all around. Given this is not an XPS, that's understandable. However, the actual chin at the bottom is quite thick and noticeable, unfortunately. However, the side bezels are narrow enough for modern day standards. And then as we make our way to the top side, you'll notice you have a relatively thin forehead at the center of which you have a respectable full HD webcam, which does well enough. Oh, and I should also mention you do have a built-in fingerprint sensor, which doubles as the power button. Display quality isn't too shabby, except for one uncomfortable fact. So things start off nice and smooth with a crisp 2.5K resolution on that 16 inch IPS panel with a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. Additionally, we have a fluid 120 Hertz refresh rate and a decent 1200 to one contrast ratio. However, then we only get a peak brightness of 300 nits, which is not bright enough for most outdoor settings and glare will overcome your screen despite having a anti-glare coating. Thankfully, we do have a 100% sRGB rating, which is decent enough for general productivity, gaming, and even photo and video editing included. A quick rundown of the technical specifications we have on board, as well as other potential configurations. So we have Intel's Core 7 Ultra 155H processor, though you can upgrade to a Core 9 Ultra processor as well. We get 32 gigabytes of DDR5 memory here, which can be configured all the way up to 64 gigabytes. Additionally, we do have Nvidia's RTX 4060 GPU here, which is the top spec for this model, though you can downscale to a RTX 4050 or even the integrated Intel Arc graphics. Given we have such a powerful configuration here, day-to-day -day activities like surfing the web, watching 4K content, or you know, online banking is gonna be a very smooth and superfluous experience. More demanding activities like programming and coding, again, totally possible. You're not gonna notice any sweat thanks to the large amount of resource pool. And then more demanding activities like photo editing, for example, again, totally doable, whether you're doing them on a discrete program like Photoshop, Photoshop or running them on a web interface like with Canva, it's going to be a very easy and crisp experience. Now, when you do the most demanding of activities like multi-layer 4K video editing, well, the good news is that this laptop doesn't break a sweat. That is until it starts thermal throttling. So you can have multiple layers, you can do color grading, and it's going to be a great experience. But after about 20 to 30 minutes of video editing, I started noticing more frequent frame drops because the laptop just starts getting very hot very quickly. You can also do some pretty high-end gaming with this machine thanks to that RTX 40 chip we have on board, which means games like Doom Eternal, for example, can consistently run well above 120 FPS at nearly maxed out settings. But then after prolonged periods, the frame rate starts dropping quite dramatically because there's just too much heat buildup, which we'll talk about right now with the thermals. This is undoubtedly the hottest 16 inch laptop I've reviewed in 2024. I am not joking, under unreal peak loads, this machine can hit a average surface temperature of up to 48 degrees Celsius in the upper third area, making it extremely uncomfortable to be near. Also, under a more realistic sustained load, you can hit temperatures of around 41 degrees Celsius, which while significantly cooler is still a very hot number. Now, that's not the only problem. Firstly, the fan on this thing is always on. Even when you're just sitting on the desktop, there's a 50% chance that the fan is gonna kick off. But when you do anything more demanding than pretty much being on the desktop, you're at max RPM levels often with fan noise reaching as high as 59 decibels, which is gaming laptop territory and very audible. On a much brighter note, upgradability here is very respectable. So you do have two sodium slots, both of which are upgradable to a maximum capacity of 64 gigabytes total. You also have two M.2 slots for SSD upgrades. So one can be upgraded with a 2280 drive while the other can be upgraded with a 2230 drive. One of which of course is obviously already preoccupied. And then you also have a M.2 slot to upgrade your Wi-Fi module to Wi-Fi 7 if you want to do that. So it's nice to see that Dell is still offering great upgrade options.
We do get a nice large 90 watt hour battery here, but because of how demanding the hardware is, you can realistically expect a runtime of about eight hours with general activities. That number drops significantly if you're doing stuff like gaming or video editing. The sound system on here isn't bad. You've basically got a quad speaker system with two bottom firing speakers and two top firing speakers, and you do have a bit of depth. It's not gonna be as good as the likes of the MacBook Air or MacBook Pro, but it is pretty sufficient for what it is. Here's a quick sound test for reference. Never looking back, I'ma keep myself on track, keep my head up, staying strong, always moving on, feel I don't belong, tell my thoughts to move along, push myself to be the best, die with no regrets, live with every breath, see my message start to spread and I depending on the configuration of the Inspiron 16 Plus you get, price ranges from as little as to $1,000 US dollars all the way north of $2,000 US dollars. Now, I feel like the Inspiron 16 Plus suffers the same fate as its younger 14-inch brother, despite me trying to keep them as separate products. It's like Dell does great things and just suddenly drops the ball out of nowhere. For example, you get a nice modern-looking design, but then you have a micro SD card reader on a 16-inch laptop. What gives? Same thing with the keyboard and trackpad. The keyboard is so well executed, but then on the contrary, you have a very low quality and mediocre trackpad. You have a great crisp display that has an astonishingly low peak brightness of 300 nits. Like, what happened? But the worst crime of it all is that you have such nice, respectable hardware capable of so many things, but because the thermals are so poorly engineered with this device, your performance just dips significantly after prolonged use, taking away from that otherwise great machine experience. And Dell does this a lot, and they have been struggling dramatically with their thermal engineering for years now on their Inspiron and Inspiron Plus series, to the point where I'm almost trying to wonder if Dell just doesn't care anymore about their Inspiron lineup. I would only recommend this laptop if you get a significant discount off it, because if you don't, you're actually not gonna get the full performance you're paying for just because of the thermal issues alone. Now, if you've had a different experience with your 16 plus or your 14 plus, I'd love to hear about it, and hopefully I am wrong, but after all the objective testing I've done, I just cannot recommend this laptop at full MSRP pricing. If you enjoyed the content, please consider subscribing to this video and of course, liking this video as well. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.